Hello, everybody. This is Games for the Mind. It's been a little while. How are you? This is my walkthrough for The Eyes of Aura. This is going to be a 100% walkthrough, and also I'm going to be showcasing how to get all the achievements. So let's get started. This is a point-and-click adventure game, which came out in 2017. Made by one person, I believe. It's a nice-looking medieval castle. So when you first start, look down, you can click and drag the screen to look around, look down, and in front of you there's a briefcase, so click on it to open it, and click on this piece of paper, and you can read about why you're here in the first place. When it comes to these notes, I'm not really going to be focusing a lot on just the story journals. Um, I will be focusing a lot more on the puzzles and the puzzle hints. And thankfully, th uh, the two are differentiated, and I'll explain that later. Uh, click on the key to pick it up. Of course, I will be picking up all the notes because there's an achievement for doing so. And click on this photograph to pick that up. That is the one photograph in this area. This is the intro area. This is before even area one. Oh, and the game is trying to tell you that uh, you can use the mouse wheel to zoom in and out of these notes. And just click away to zoom out of anything, any object. And now look to the right, and the game is telling you, hey, you can click over here, so go ahead and do that. And before you go through this gate here, you're going to want to actually turn around and look at this symbol here carved into this stone. And you're going to want to actually draw this symbol and write down next to that symbol that it is for the intro area. Okay, so do that. Then turn back around, zoom in on the gate, and you can click and drag items to use them when they turn solid like that. All right, let's go through. Now in this area, we have a couple notes to pick up before we do anything. So the first one is right here. Okay. And the second one is a little bit harder to find. It is down here in the grass. And it's a very short one. And zoom out. And let's focus on what we need to do. So zoom in on this, and we need to find the object that can fit in here, but it is split into two pieces. And so the first piece is over here. Zoom in on this, and rotate it until you see the opening, and click on the item to pick it up. Get out of there, come over to here, zoom in on this, and move this to the top. And pick that one up. Now, the game is trying to teach you here that you can click and drag an item 
into another item to combine the two. And we've just done that. So zoom out and zoom back into here and put it in. And it'll open the door. Now here we can go into this drawer and get our first three coins. And you see we have three out of five. Uh, clicking on this button down here will show you your item total for each area. So this is the intro area. We have three out of five coins and one out of one photographs. Pretty easy for this section. Uh, zoom out of here and click on the book and read it. And what you need to know from this book is this combination down here, which is down, down, up, up, down, up. So write that down and zoom out. And we need to do that three times. The first is in here. See, here it is. Down, down, up, up, down, up. Zoom out. Go over to here. Down, down, up, up, down, up. And finally, on the generator. Down, down, up, up, down, up. If done correctly, that door will open. So go through. And on this table, we have our other two coins. So now we have all the collectibles for the intro. That was pretty easy. Now to open this box, you have to actually pull down on this lever. So do that, and the box will open. And you'll get this item. So zoom out and leave here. And zoom in on this part of the generator. And you see that the object can fit in here, but we have to orient it the right way first. So if you look at this, you see that one has to match with one down here, two has to match with two, and three has to match with three. So basically, the top left has to go to the bottom right, middle left has to go to the top right, and bottom left has to go to the middle right. And the game, in the intro, kind of gives you hints, like, hey, it's this object. So now we have to line up these lines correctly to achieve that. And the correct orientation is... I know these two... It's these two same uh, ones for the first two. And then the third one... Um, has two that kind of look like this, but they're a little different, and it's probably not this one. No, it's not. So find the other one that kind of looks like that, and maybe it's this one. Let's see. Up goes down, middle goes up, and bottom goes to the middle. Yes, that should be it. So click out, and then now you should be able to drag and drop it in. And if it goes in, that means you did it correctly. And push the start-stop button. And that'll turn on the lights down here and open up the door. And we got our first achievement called the signal for beating the intro area. And now we can leave the intro area and go to area one. And every time you go to a new area, you'll see a loading screen for that area. All right, so now we're on the first screen of Area 1. You'll see there are two action figures to find, 30 coins, two blue balls, eight photographs, and one painting. All right. But before we do any of that, here's another one of those stone columns with a carving. So what I'm going to need you guys to do is make a the best... Of your ability, draw this uh, this symbol and write down next to it that this is from Area 1. Okay, we're going to need that way, way, way later in the game. Uh, but for now, turn around to the stairs that you just came from, and over here, there's a photograph. 
our first one for this area. So get it and zoom out. And over here, there's a note that isn't really important, but we're trying to get all the notes anyway. And two coins. Now zoom out. And the puzzle is to find the item that looks like it fits in here. Well, it is right here. So click it. Zoom out. Go back in. Put it on. And line up the circles with the two little circles. Doesn't matter which way you go. Get the circles on the circles. And we can go through the door. Now there's a lot to see down here and all that, but actually we really can't do anything down here yet. Our main goal is to fill these three circles with their circular uh, objects. This one is encased in glass. That's all you really need to know right now. Just go up the stairs. And right to your left on the railing here, you can get two more coins. And let's check this out while we're up here. This is a hidden door that we open much later, and you'll see these six, I'm going to call them gargoyle heads for lack of a better term. So keep that in mind. We're going to have to find six of these gargoyle heads elsewhere to open this. Now turn around and click on this and pick it up. And zoom out, and you might want to make note of the fact that this dude over here is missing a shield, whereas this guy already has one. Just keep that in mind. Anyway, we have our item. We can go back down the stairs. And we could put it over here. You could put it in either the left or the right one. Uh, the left one will open up that little door that we saw upstairs. And the right one will open up this little door. It doesn't matter what you do first. I'm just going to put it in the left. So we just opened up that door. And we have part of what we need to open up that glass case. Okay, so go back upstairs and let's go in that door that just opened. When you enter this room, you'll immediately hear an annoying, staticky kind of a noise. And if you look to your left, you'll see it's coming from this radio. And there is an achievement for turning off all the radios and getting rid of that static. So go ahead and turn that annoying radio off. And there's a note here. Go ahead and read it. And then zoom out. And over on this windowsill... There's a photograph, our second one. And zoom in on the desk. There's plenty to pick up here. Open this box, get three coins, and grab this knife, and open the journal, and make note of the fact that you can twist the hilt of the blade, and it rotates the bottom blade um, clockwise or counterclockwise uh, either at the position of uh, like 9 o'clock or 3 o'clock if you imagine it like a clock face whereas the top blade is always at 12 o'clock okay now zoom out and go over here and click on this box and slide open the lock to the right and it'll open and click on this piece of map here okay now zoom out and you see the big floor map on the ground click on it and let's add our piece here to the middle now we have to line up the map so the piece that we just added in it does not move now there's two very important pieces of information that'll help you line this up. The first is that you can pretty obviously see that the bottom or south portion of this map uh, will have most of the land, you know, whereas the top portion is not going to have as much land. And the second piece of information 
which is a little bit harder to see. It's easiest to see on the tiny piece that we just added in. You see, look at my mouse here. See, there's an equator line. And each of the pieces of this donut actually have that line. And all you got to do is line up the line, making sure that you know, obviously all the land is going to be on the south side. So I'm pretty sure this is the equator line for this one. So let's line that up. And let's see. Can I find the equator line for this one? Um, should, oh, there it is. Yep. Okay. Oh, I kind of screwed up. Okay, there you go. And now this one... Let's get that land lined up. Oh, there's the line. Ta-da! That should be it. Okay, good. And that'll turn on that light. Which is illuminating a certain book over here. And we're going to pull that book out. And we open up our glass case for our donut piece. For lack of a better term. Let's pick it up. And zoom out. And now we hear a noise from outside, if you were paying attention. So let's go back out. And it looks like this place was ransacked. And you see this painting is moving. Now, you cannot move or do anything until you click on this painting that's vibrating. So let's click on it. And we see uh, this blue thing kind of scurry on out of there and now we can go back down the stairs and let's add our donut piece into the donut slot and we'll open that door and we'll open the glass casing on that all right well let's go through all right lots to do in here let's solve the main puzzle first so if you zoom in on this here's our last donut piece and you see these two blue lights here that need to be lit up all you got to do is find the two blue lights in the room so the first one is right here on the wall just click it turns blue zoom out and the other one is right here just click it and it opens up. So go ahead and take it. Alright. Zoom out. Uh, you can open this door. I don't think there's anything behind here. No. Uh, in here, you can open this and find part of a lever piece. So grab it. And next to it is a note. Grab that. Alright. Zoom out. And... Now, down here on this box is a clue note. And now, here's a good time to point this out. If you click this thing and you, you can see all your notes and journals and stuff up here, the ones with the question mark are clues to a puzzle that you need to solve the puzzle. And once you solve that particular puzzle that the clue goes to, this question mark and the clue will actually disappear from your inventory. And this button is how you open up this inventory in the first place. Okay. All right. Now let's zoom out and let's go up here to this box. Now there's a bunch of boxes like this in the game where you have to rotate these four squares to make a shape and all of these shapes end up being the um, one of the 12 symbols of the zodiac. And so this one is Pisces. So like that. And you get three coins. And zoom out. And now if you look over here, you see there's a yellow glow, suspicious yellow glow over here, and you see that your mouse changes. You can zoom in there, so go ahead. And we have a yellow bright ball. 
And what that does is when you get three of them and you place the three of them in the proper spot, they will yield you one of the two blue balls that are in each of the three main areas of the game. So zoom out. And what else do we have in here? Well, if you look up at the ceiling and zoom in on this thing, you'll see these that you can rotate. But we do not yet have the code for this, so I will come back and solve this later. But you can make a note that it's in here. And with that, I think we're done in here for now, so let's exit. And let's put our donut in the donut thingamajig. Boom. And we can go in here now, so let's do that. Alright, if you go to your upper right on the bookshelf, here's a photograph. Grab it. That's three out of eight. And over here on this table, we have two coins. And what's nice about this game is, let's say, let's use this as an example. So there's, the only important thing on this table were two coins. And now that we zoomed out, the game won't let you zoom back in because we got everything from over there. So that's something to keep in mind. Uh, you're going to want to go over here and push this big red button, and I'll show you a little later what that does. So, actually you can kind of see it from here. It turned on some lasers, but you'll get a better view a little later. Uh, now over here is the main puzzle. Uh, you want to put these tiles in their proper positions. If you think of it as north, east, south, and west, okay? And the clue for that is actually right over here, this paper. So open that paper up, and you see we have our hint icon showing you that this is a clue. And it is the clue to solve that. So what does this mean? What can we learn from this? Well, there's four symbols on here, okay? And this cross section is the north, east, south, and west. Now. You see the crescent moon is crossed off here, here, and here. Which means it has to go here on the east part. Okay, so now we know that crescent moon... Oh, I'm sorry, west, guys. Whoops, my bad. The so crescent moon goes over here on the west side, okay? And what else can we learn now? Well, we see that the comet symbol is crossed off on the south and east. But we know now that the crescent moon is definitely on the west. So we know that the comet is not going to go west either, and that only leaves north. Okay, so we know that the crescent moon is west. We know that the comet is north. Now, if you look at this clue down here on the bottom of the paper, you see that it has a picture of the star and the comet across from each other, but then there's an X underneath. And what that's trying to show you is that the, the star and the comet cannot be across from one another. So we know that the comet is in the north position. We know that the star cannot be in the south position. So therefore, we can conclude that the star is going to go east. And the only other symbol that's left is this one, which I think represents the sun, maybe. I'm not sure. But this one has to go south. Okay, so now we know where everything goes. So let's actually solve the puzzle. Um, let me crescent moon there. Uh, we need this one over there. Comment. Hold on. Let's do this, actually. That goes on the bottom. Comet is north. Star is east. There we go. And that'll get you the other half of the lever. We can combine these two items now to make a full lever. Alright, so zoom out. And I believe that is all we can do in here for now. But look at the ceiling. And again, we have another one of these codes. 
But again, we don't know the answer to this one, so we'll have to come back a little later. We'll zoom out, and let's get out of here. Now, if you zoom in on this door, you can put one of the levers here, but you see we need another one, so let's go get that. It's real close. Turn over here and zoom in on the clock. Now you see there's an opening at 12 o'clock and an opening at 3 o'clock. Uh, do we have an item that can fit in there? Yes, we do. We have this blade. As long as you rotate it to be 12 and 3, we can put it in. Alright, so here's this puzzle. So first of all, how do we know what what is even the answer to this puzzle? Well, there's only one way that this can rotate, which is clockwise, and then it clicks in there. And you see that when it does, the two arrows light up at 12 o'clock and 3 o'clock. So, we can deduce from that that the only two green lights that we want on should be the one at 12 o'clock and the one at 3 o'clock. Now, when you click a button, it will change the state of that button plus the two buttons that surround it. And so, to solve this puzzle in a pretty easy way, what I like to do is I like to turn everything off by clicking on the middle buttons on both sides. So now, everything's off and we have a clean slate. And if we want only the 12 and 3 o'clock lights lit up, you want to click on the two buttons in between 12 and 3. Like that. And that'll light them up. And then just rotate this to the right, and that's it. It's that easy. And take back your knife, because we'll need it again. And we have opened the clock, and we can get our complete lever. So, zoom out. And go back to the door, put your lever in there, and pull them both down. And we open the green door, and go through. Oh, you see uh, that big red button in here turned on all these lasers. You'll have two lasers controlled from here, which we've already been, and two lasers controlled from here, which we haven't been to yet. Your goal is to align each laser with one of these four points here, and then the middle one will light up, and you'll get one of your blue spheres. Uh, the tricky part about it is that each laser can hit more than one of these, so you have to figure out through process of elimination and a little bit of logic which one should go to which. And so actually, before I go through this green door, I think I'm going to set these two lasers. Okay, so let's go upstairs and do that. Let's start with this one on the back wall. You want to try to figure out first which ones they can hit. So this one can hit those top three. So you, what you want to do is think about, if I was on the other balcony, where does it look like those two lasers from the other balcony can hit so that we don't set this one to the wrong one? Well, it looks like they can hit the bottom one, the very bottom one, and this one. This, this laser looks like it can go to this one to me, and this laser looks like it can hit the bottom one. Okay, so, and this laser on the other wall right next to us looks like it can hit the top. So I can deduce from that that this laser should hit this one that I'm on now, the one that's most to the left, okay? So zoom out, and let's put the other one at the top. It looks like it can reach. I think. Uh, no, maybe not. Okay.
Let me see here. Let me see. Let me see. Aha, uh -huh. okay. There we go, it is possible. And this one I'm going to put actually all the way at the top. All right. Good. So the so basically you can tell that if you look at the two lasers on the other side, you see that it looks like they're going to be able to hit this spot and this spot. So we should be all good covering the two uh the two top ones here on this side. So hopefully that's correct and I won't have to come all the way back and do that again. All right. Now we can go through the door. And we see these two guys moving around and looking at us. And then they go into the two side rooms, kind of indicating like, hey, you're going to have to go in these two side rooms. But first, before we do anything, you're going to actually want to turn 180 degrees back to the green door and go right back through to the other room that we just came from. And the reason for that is because if you notice now that we're back here from the green door, we are actually at a different camera angle in this room. And now that we're at a different camera angle, we can get some stuff that we missed before. And down here near the stairs is a photograph. Our fourth one. And zoom out. And we can also see this uh, desk and we can open this poster. And there's an achievement for getting all these posters as well. Uh, from this one, you're going to want to write down the number 2024. Definitely write that down right now on a piece of paper. And we get an achievement for also reading all of the Edge of Infinity books, which has like constellations and stuff. And this is Orion, and actually you are going to want to remember kind of what this looks like. Um, he, you know, here's Orion's belt, and you can see that it's a little bit on an angle, like a diagonal angle here. Just get a rough, you know, you might want to jot this down somewhere. It'll, it'll help out for a puzzle later. Okay. And that's it. So now we can go back through the green door. And let's see, what can we find in here? Well, right on this table, this little nightstand here, we see a piece of paper. And it is the other half of the clue that we found before in the storage room. So now, see, we have both halves. That'll come in handy. So zoom out. And over here, there's a little box. And there's two coins in there. So zoom out. And over here by the green door that we just came from is one of those six gargoyle heads that I told you guys about earlier. And all you got to do is click on it and the eyes will open. And that's that. Okay. Now we have to go into one of the two side rooms and you're going to want to go in this one first with the... Uh, with the lamp next to it, okay? Now here we're in a big dining room and there's like lots of stuff to look at and whatnot, but we can't really do anything too important in here yet. But we can pick up a couple coins from right here, so grab those. And once you've done that, you could just go right through to the other door. It'll open right up when you click on it. And here we see a treasure chest with a four-digit code. 
And remember, I just told you guys to write down 2024 from the poster. That is the answer, so put that in. 2024. And it'll open, and we get our second glowy yellow ball from there, okay? So zoom out. Uh, come up to the top of this arcway. And here's a photograph hiding. That's five out of eight. And up here on this wall is another gargoyle head. Just click on it. That's the second one. And zoom in on this book here and open it. And remember I showed you guys these on the ceilings. So here's the combination for them. This one up here in figure one was in the storage room. And um, basically the combination is up. You see, these two face in the corners, which you don't want to pay attention to, but this one, when you rotate it, it faces in the four cardinal directions, and that's the one you want to pay attention to. And as you can see, in all of these, it is facing north, okay? Now, this one in figure two was on the ceiling of that little room that was behind the gate. Uh, underneath the big stairs in the main area. And as you can see, and it even talks about it over here, it kind of goes in a in a zigzaggy pattern. So south, east, north, east, south, west. Okay? They kind of point at each other here. Okay? All right. So that's that. And now we can go through into the kitchen. Now, our main puzzle in the kitchen is to find all these green diamonds. There's six of them and put them all in here. But let's get everything else that we can collect first. So on the refrigerator, there's an easy to see photograph. Now we have six out of eight of those. And in the trash can, there's a note you can read. And over here on these plates, we can get two coins. All right, so now we can start collecting the six green gems. Just got to find them all. Here's one. Here's two. Here's three, four, five, and the last one is in this box. All right. Now we can put them all in. And grab this item. Looks very familiar, doesn't it? Zoom out. And get out of here. Go all the way back to the green door room. Alright, now this time you want to go in the door on the other side, which we're already facing. All right, so in here, you can see this box hiding from us. This is one of the Zodiac sign boxes. This is Cancer. So I want to form that symbol. And the box will open, and you get a photograph. We now have seven out of eight of those. Only one more to get. And here's a note you can read down here. And now, if you zoom in on this, pretty obviously this item can go in there. And we know what can fit in these two slots that are at 12 o'clock and 9 o'clock, right? It's the blade. 
So just rotate the blade so that the bottom one faces 9 o'clock on the left side there. And put it in. And then rotate this. And it'll open up a hidden passage. And let's go in. Now, right when you go in, you see that you're in one of these uh, spiral staircase narrow areas. And whenever you're in an area like that, if you search the wall, you'll see a stone that sticks out. And if you zoom in on it and click on it, it'll slide out and you can get an object. And in this case, it is our last photograph. We have found them all in this chapter. So now zoom out. And let's just go in this green door before going all the way up. Alright, so the main puzzle here is right in front of us, but let's do everything else first. If you go to the left, you see a shield. We've seen this shield before, and we know which knight needs it, don't we? So let's pick it up. And if we go over here, we see two boxes. They both have coins. Let's grab them. All right. And up here, we have another gargoyle head. Click on it. And on this nightstand here is a book called Micromagus, and there is one of these books in each of the three main areas, and you'll get an achievement for finding them all, so click on this one to read it. Okay. Now let's line up these lasers to finish this puzzle off. And hopefully I was right about where they line up. Well, I wasn't exactly right. I think I had them flipped. I thought that that one would go on the bottom, but it looks like it might be this one. If we can get it there. I really hope we can. Yes. And once you do that, you will unlock one of our blue balls. And it'll end up right there for us to pick up later. All right, I think that's all the extra stuff we can do here. Let's solve the main puzzle. Let's zoom in on this. We see there are six of these triangle square things that you can rotate. And that should look familiar to you from your notes. From your two clues here. All right, here's the left paper. And you'll see it shows that the first one here will be triangle on the top and square on the bottom. Okay. The next one looks like square on the left, triangle on the right. And the other one just shows triangle on the left, and we can't see what's over here yet, but I assume square is going to be right on the right of that. So let's see. And yes, so square is right on the right. And then the next two have the squares on top and the triangles on the bottom. And the last one, which represents this one here, has the triangle on the right, square on the left. Okay, not too hard. So, these two triangles were touching. This one was just 180 degrees for both of them, and then this one had triangle out to the right. And if done correctly, you will open up those three glass cases. And you can grab all three of these. And I want you to notice while you're here, in the background, is the painting for this chapter. But we cannot... <laughs> for some reason, we cannot get over this table. So we're going to have to get it way later. Okay? But there it is. And we kind of see a ladder going up to this trap door. Hmm. All right. Something to pay attention to, but let's go out. And now let's go up. Up. And we see our buddies hanging out, and 
and they're gonna like run away as usual. Uh, down here we see three coins. Okay. And zoom in on this egg-shaped thingy. And twist this thing open. Just drag to the right and open it all the way. And we get our final yellow orb, which will yield us a green one. I mean, a blue one. Sorry. Go back down the stairs. And down again. And remember this room here? I actually think I forgot to point out this gargoyle head the first time we were in here. My apologies, but there it is. So click on him. All right. Now, we just got these three items. Now, notice the border of this, okay? It's a silver border, and it has this symbol thing on the border, okay? And over here, we've seen a couple of these before, is where you're going to place them, and it has the same silver border and symbol. All right? So how you solve this, you see you can click these arrows, and it'll rotate through different images. When you're in a room with one of these pedestals, you'll see some paintings scattered about in portraits, like these two. And the one that you want to pay attention to is the one with the silver border and those uh, motifs on the border. And in this case, it's this one. This room is the easiest because, I mean, I think this is the only other painting and you can't really see it from here and you can't get a closer look anyway. So this is really the only one in here you can get a good look at. And which item do you see in this painting that looks important? Well, it's the sword. The sword's right there. So, sword is the answer for this one. So let's set it to the sword. There it is. And just drag and drop it on. You won't be able to drop it on until you have the right image selected, okay? So that's the first one. And here we're in another room with one of these, and there's a bunch of paintings in here. But the important one is, like I told you, the silver border with those motifs on the borders. And here it is, and the important item here is the flag. So flag is the answer. Flag. Drag and drop it on. There you go. Now, uh, find the other one through here, and through here, and here it is, but the important painting is not quite in this room, it is through here. Go through, and turn around, and here it is, and it is a painting of a windmill, so windmill is the answer. So go back, uh, we're going to zoom in on here. And select the windmill. And put it on. And once you have all three set, you'll hear the noise that you did something good. But what did that do? Well, each of these pedestals has a wire coming out. And all three wires lead to the same thing, which you might have noticed is in the dining room. And when you zoom in on it, there's the three wires. You zoom in on it. When you have all three set, and that'll slide out of the way, and now we can drag this to the right. And we get these buttons. Four of them. So pick up all four. And let's just put them all in. And let's grab these paintings. Don't worry about this thing right now. I'll show you what that means a little later. So this you can rotate um, counterclockwise to shut the drawer, but you want to actually rotate it clockwise to open the drawer. We want an open drawer, so rotate it all the way until you can't anymore. And grab the painting and another one of these things. Notice these two circles are across from each other. That was different from the other one. 
See, these two are kind of at an angle from each other. Looks like we're going to be doing most of our work here, but forget about that for now. Let's get rid of our last arrow thingamajig. And that turns on a light here. Okay, now, remember back when I told you guys to jot down the picture of Orion, the constellation? Well, that's because this constellation that just lit up really looks like part of the Orion one. And that's kind of how you know where it's going to be set, roughly. Okay. And these arrows control how you can rotate it. And you kind of remember Orion has like a belt, and he has his, his uh, horizontal line thing under the belt. And the belt was kind of at an angle, like a little bit of a diagonal angle like this. That looks about right to me. And then you can rotate these two sections, and you just want to line up the stars so that it lines up with uh, the lighted up lines. So all the stars should hit the ends and the joints of all these lines here. It'll line up pretty good. Uh, looks like, yeah, see these... Whoa, see, I, wow, I, di I didn't barely even had to move the middle one. <laughs> there we go. All right, so get the painting. And now look at this one. This one is uh, three of these circles, and it's like in a Y shape, almost, okay? And you can rotate them and yada yada. So let me explain that to you guys now. So, like, let's look back at the table. <clears throat> now these three you can't move, but this one you can. This one has three symbols on it. And these have a bunch. Now... What you want to do is line it up so that if you take this one, for example, if this one's going to be the yellow diamond, you want to connect it to another yellow diamond here. And then whatever this one's going to be, when it goes to here, you want to make it the same as here. You understand? So this one's green. If this was the right orientation here, you'd want it green, green, and then whatever's here, you can change. Like, yellow, if it's yellow, you want to connect it to yellow. If it's red, you're like, oh, I'll connect it to red. And you want to line them all up. And now let me show you the solution. The way I like to solve this, if you want to solve it yourself, is I like to focus on this one here because it's the least most complicated and it only has two points. And I like to focus on one of the points, and there's only four symbols on here, and I like to just process of elimination, you know, try green first. <clears throat> if you can't get green to work, which you'll figure out pretty quickly, then go to red. If red over here doesn't work, then yellow, and yada, yada, yada. So I seem to remember that the correct orientation for this one is yellow to be up here where the green is. And the tricky thing is, you see they're north and these two are north and south here, but... In reality, it's, you know, east and west, but you have to think of it as north and south. So this one is the north one because green is next to it. So you want to change it to yellow. You want to basically flip it 180 degrees. And let's look back at here real quick and see what we can do. Uh, well, we know, we know green's going to be down here, and there's only one green here. So let's, uh, we know that this is the two on a wide angle one. So let's put green from the one it's on now to the other one. Green is on one, but we know that that's the wrong one. Put it to the other one. And now we know that blue is going to be here. So let's change that. And now we know that we need yellow here and red here. And so all we got to do is rotate this clockwise one position. So we're just going to move the yellow to here where the blue is. It's the one that's not part of the branching Y shape, obviously. Okay. 
That should do it. And now we should be all lined up. Let's see. Yellow, yellow, red, yep. Yep. And once you have it all lined up, click on the red engage button. And we got our last painting, the gigantic one. And what do we do with all these paintings? Well, we see an empty painting up here, so zoom in on it. And you want to place down all the paintings from largest to smallest in the empty part of the painting. You, you get what I'm saying. There you go. And now we have our triangle item, which is pretty much the item that means, hey, you beat the area, you can move on to the next area, congratulations. But obviously we can't yet because we have some optional things to finish up first, which we might as well do. So go back to the green door room. And instead of going through the door to the next area, let's go back through the green door. All right, well, first of all, we could pick up our blue ball. Boom. And when you pick up your first one, you'll get the achievement, the Light of Stars, as you can see. And let's go back in the storage room here. We can solve that ceiling puzzle. And as I told you guys before, the arrow, I'll call it an arrow for lack of a better term, that's facing in the cardinal directions. You want it to face north on all of them. And then a thing should pop out in the ceiling. That's a toy. That's our first toy. Action figure, whatever you want to call it. Uh, we can leave here. Let's go in here. And remember, we have another ceiling puzzle. This one was a zigzag pattern going south, east, north, east, south, west. And that'll slide the bookshelf out of the way to reveal a hidden passage. So let's go in there. Now in here, if we look at the right wall and go up... We see another gargoyle head. Alright. And if we go on this ledge here, we see two coins. And so we have 27 out of 30 coins. And that's all we're going to be able to get in this chapter for now until we come back later. The other three coins are behind that gargoyle door that I pointed out at the beginning of the video. Or close to the beginning of the video. Now you see a trapdoor here, and to open it you want to look up and to the right, and up here is a chain. You can pull it down, trapdoor will open, and we'll be in a whole different area, as you'll notice from the loading screen. And This is actually area 3, so we're skipping over area 2 and going all the way to area 3 over here. And you see right in front of you is the area 3 painting, not the area 1 painting, this is the area 3 painting. So we got that, but before you leave, turn around and look carefully over here. You see part of a lever switch thing that you can pull towards you. Do that, and you have opened up a hidden wall, but we will not be down there until we get to Area 3 the real way. But the only way to open that is from up here, okay? And that is like a treasure room. How exciting. But that's all we can do in this little balcony alcove. Let's go back up into area one. And turn around so that we can continue down this hallway to the other side. And you will hear that annoying ass noise. So look to the left and here's a radio. And turn it off. Zoom out, and then on the other side, on the ground, is another toy. Our second action figure. And that is pretty much it here, yes. So, go back. 
and go back and go back to the stairs we're gonna go up the stairs now you want to take a look at the gargoyle door and you can click on all the ones that have one eye open to open up the second eye make sure that you have five out of six of these done by this point if not you'll have to go back in the video and find the other five so you should have it so that there's only one more to find okay and that'll be found a little later zoom out and now we're on the dreaded shield puzzle that i don't like because it's very finicky so what we want to do is give this guy his shield but we can't yet because if you look at this shield you see how these symbols are orientated we want to mirror that for the other soldier with his shield so what i like to do is i like to start with these two symbols i'm going to call them a fleur de lis for lack of a better term they're a little bit easier to set up because you can see where they're pointing towards so this one on top here is pointing towards the outside corner of the shield. On my practice run, I did this on my first try, which I never do. Let's see if I can do that again. It's very finicky, so... That looks like it's pointing toward the outer corner. Let's do these one at a time. So this one is pointing towards, if we count these buttons on the outside of the shield, if I count down one two it's pointing at the second one down from this middle bar here one two right looks like it's pointing right at that on the outside here so let's try to do that one two would be that one that looks pretty close i guess that's close enough now let's do the moons those are a bit harder um Let's see, so I like to focus on the two points of the crescent moon. And let's see, for the top one, we see that if you go to the third button out from the middle here, and you kind of, if you draw a straight line down, it kind of hits the point. And then also this point is kind of right across from, I'm going to call it the third leaf thing that sticks out from this vertical branch if you can see what i'm saying kind of directly horizontal from that from this little little vine little i don't know um so one two three here's the third button so this one was kind of right under that kind of this looks like the uh, third branch or whatever coming off of the the middle branch the middle vertical branch that looks pretty close to me i'm gonna leave it there for now all right now the bottom moon looks like it is kind of across from yeah there's a little tiny branch hanging off from the thing here it looks like it's right across from that at that point and then this point is kind of right above this if you draw a horizontal line on this dot this point is kind of right above the line and Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven from the bottom. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, let's see if that works. Whoops. Uh, seven from the bottom. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Kind of right above. And then this one is like a cross from that list see the this branch is a little tiny one and i want to say that that's good look that looks good to me 
Let's see if I did this on my first try. I usually do not. But this time I did because I'm cool like that. And now we open up a thing in the wall. And you should recognize that as Orion. And you see Orion's belt is missing. It's got three indentations, and we happen to, of course, have the three yellow balls that go in there. Let's put them in. And we got our blue ball. Two out of two. The blue balls, by the way, they seem like a collectible, but those are actually mandatory to beat the game, whereas the other collectibles are not, so keep that in mind. And now let's check on our collectibles. And yeah, this is what your collectibles should look like when you first get through Chapter 1. You should only be missing the painting, which we saw but we couldn't get, and three coins, which are behind us, uh, behind the gargoyle wall over there. Okay? So go back down the stairs. We're going to head to Chapter 2 now through the green door. And right in front of us here is obviously where you can put the triangular, whatever this is, alien artifact looking thing. And it'll light up. And you'll open the door. And those dudes in front of you will fly on ahead of you. And when you beat chapter one, you get the achievement Abandoned Halls for beating the chapter or the area. Now, let's head into Area 2. And you'll see it'll load Area 2. That's the loading screen for Area 2. And now we're in Area 2. And from here on out, the game gets a lot harder. That was really the easy part of the game. Area 2 and 3 are much harder, especially Area 2, if you're going to not use the quote-unquote cheat codes which I will show you guys, and I, of course, am not going to use the cheat codes, but I will show you the cheat codes anyway. But that'll be for next time. So, so long, and I'll see you in the next video.